Welcome to the second broadcast, I guess, of uh, Dead Drop Live. Uh, I am K.M. Alexander. I'm the writer of the Bell Forging Cycle. Um, I've never really streamed very much before, so I figured it went really well last time. I'll try it this time. We'll see what's, what people think. It's going to be a little different than last time. I'm, gonna call, I'm calling this one more of like a working stream than um, the previous like reading sort of thing. Um, I'm still happy to answer any questions from the chat. I'm still, um, you know, happy to, you know, have conversation and that sort of thing. But we will definitely be moving on to exploring um, how I kind of create my um, old hot vignettes that you've probably seen me posting on social media. Um, so that's definitely going to be kind of the focus tonight. Um, hoping, excuse me, hoping that it will, um, you know, should take about an hour would be my guess. It may be a little less. We'll see. It depends on questions and that sort of thing. But thank you for tuning in. Um, if you're not tuning in live, that's okay too. Um, I've learned a lot since the last stream. So previously I had uh, no idea what I was doing. I had essentially signed up for Twitch like a couple days before. Didn't spend any time with any software. I'm still pretty new and my use case is a little different than other people's use case since most of the time it's going to be me having conversation and doing well, this, this sort of stuff the kind of thing I'm going to do tonight so um, a little different than like trying to stream a game or like that sort of thing um, and you know maybe I'll do that in the future but it's not like high on my priority list so that's uh, kind of what uh, tonight's going to entail um, I think you'll dig it uh, so yeah um, today is the, uh, one week, uh, one, Gleam Upon the Waves is one week old, so happy one week birthday to my fourth book, Gleam Upon the Waves. Uh, I want to thank everybody who, who's gone and picked it up. It means a lot to me. Um, it's an honor that you've chosen to read my book. Uh, there's a lot of books out there and I don't take that lightly. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, I posted on my blog today a little bit about just what's going, you know, what's happened in the last week or so. Um, talked about Dead, Dead Drop Alive tonight. Uh, just to update for those who are interested in um, signed copies. Uh, so the, the way it works is you have to push the book live and then Amazon lets me order author copies. Um, well, formerly CreateSpace, now Kindle Direct Publishing, a subsidiary of Amazon Corp. Um, so is Twitch, really. Anyway, um, everything is. Uh, so that takes time because then they, you know, print them. And so I'm, I'm hearing it's going to be right around the 15th. As soon as I get them, um, they'll be in my store immediately afterwards. I know there's a few people that have emailed me a few times wondering where they're at. Um, please be patient. They're coming. I appreciate your enthusiasm. I mean, it does mean a lot to me. So uh, thank you for that. Um I'm looking over here because I have notes. That's what's going on. That's why I keep looking this way. Um, so, yeah, tonight um, I wanted to dive into uh, old haunts. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen kind of the Photoshop stuff that I have uh, been doing for a while. Um, creepy images with, you know, the gargoyles from my books kind of lurking in the background or, you know, some sort of cityscape sort of thing. It's usually gritty and grimy. Um, Old Haunts in a lot of ways um, has, has kind of been the of the next evolutionary step of those, um, which is me basically animating these scenes out in a way that is, I think, engaging and also loops. And the loop was kind of initially a challenge because I was Try, thinking these were going to mainly stay on um, on Instagram, and Instagram likes to loop video, and I hate it when video just cuts and then pops back to the beginning. So I was like, well, it'd be great if these things could loop. So that now they've designed to loop, which make which adds an extra level of challenge into the design of both the audio and kind of the animation, and it really is kind of limited on some some level um, what I am able to. Um, kind of get from various sources because I try to do these things as as on the up and up as possible obviously um, you know I'm licensing stock footage I'm licensing photography you know I'm making sure that you know I'm above board in, in those instances music's been a little harder it's why I tend to use music that's not totally 
um, in my mind, what would be the kind of jazz god sort of uh, era that you would hear within the city of Lovat, but I can get close enough or I can at least sample a small enough piece that doesn't step on any toes and allows me to um, incorporate kind of that looping aspect um, into into the piece. Um, so that that's kind of what has happened and how those things came came about and came to be. As of now, I've actually assembled them um, all on a new page on my website. If you go to if you go to my books and then you go to reader resources, um, there you'll find a a sub page. It's called just old haunts, and you'll see them listed in order of um, chronological order. Uh, you you know starting with Lucky Star and then moving through the most recent one, which um, I, I posted yesterday, which was Red Light Night. Um, so, and I'll keep doing that as I keep kind of throwing these out there. It seems people really dig them. Um, if you like them, share them with your friends, tell people about them, tweet them. Like I, you know, it, I don't get any money from them, but they're fun to make and I'd love to get more eyes on them. So if you enjoy what you're seeing, you know, do what you can to tell other people that, you know, these cool things exist. Um, so so that's kind of the old haunt. Uh, I'm going to actually switch to my main screen so everybody can see what kind of how these things are built out. Um, I think it'll be a really interesting story. Uh, some new stuff um, just to do a little bit more housekeeping with Dead Drop Live. We now have, uh, it's right there. We have this cool little uh, bug in the corner, which is fun. Um, that's also where my face will be when I'm, sh when I'm demoing stuff. Uh, now, You'll start to see chat and stuff show up here. That way, on the um, the recording, you'll be able to see what people are saying. So you can say hi, and you know you'd see that show up right here. And then alerts and stuff are in this corner, I believe. So um, really try to take advantage of the platform. A lot of stuff I just didn't know, and I don't watch a ton of streams, so it's, I'm just kind of adapting it to my vision of stuff. So <laughs> that's what we're doing. Um, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and switch over to my main screen. Ta-da! Welcome to my desktop. It's actually pretty clean, um, which is not normal for for me. Um, sometimes you'll find a lot of images all over the place. I keep everything kind of grouped together. I'm on a Mac. Um, we'll see how well it does as I'm jumping through some very processor-heavy, um, you know, software and also streaming. Um, it's an adventure. So, uh, yeah, Old Haunts. This is the Old Haunts page I was talking about. As I said, it, it lives up here under my books and under reader resources. There's going to be a few more things coming out there as well, so always keep your eye open if you're always looking for anything to extend your experience of the world of the territories. This is a good place to go. The Old Haunts are obviously going to be there. Um, I added these fun... Uh, you don't see these on, like, Instagram or anything, but I've really enjoyed these... Um, adding these kind of fun noir-esque titles to everything. I think you will too. Um, and yeah, so Red Light Night was the most recent one. Let's see if the audio plays. So yeah, and um, my vlog allows me to actually loop these it, just like I would on the screen, which I love. Uh, and then it, with, by the way, this has some flashing stuff, so content warning, some flashes, things like that, folks, the folks sensitivity people. Look away for a while. Um, I don't always do that, but it just happened to work with this one. You'll see it's coming up right now. So, um, how do I go about doing this? Uh, and the answer is very complicated. We'll pause this for now. Um, it starts with it starts with location. It all starts with location. Uh, the series is really a love letter to the idea of the city. Um, what I think is one of mankind's greatest inventions and I love the gritty parts of a city as you can probably tell from reading my um, uh, books um, I love uh, graffiti I love um, the haphazardness of older parts I love layers within a city um, stairwells that have you know they, it, like like there's you know stairwells and under passages and tunnels and the way you know rows will end weirdly and you know something else will begin just like all that sort of stuff is a really fascinating part of 
the concept of a city, which is really this collective, um, you know, habitation. And it's a lot of give and take. And I think that that actually requires a lot of people. And I think it's um, something that, uh, I, you know, I'm aware of as I just pass through the city. But also it's something that I've really thought about as I've written the concept of Lovat. So that that's where a lot of this comes from. Um, looks like I got a new follower. Did you like the fun little... Fun little spooky music that plays. I figured I would keep it kind of on theme to uh, to spy stuff since I named this stream Dead Drop, and that's a spy thing. So uh, yeah, so let's start. Uh, I've been working on this for a while, so I'm not going to actually just sit here and do Photoshop. Like we're not going to play the game where you get to watch me extract things from backgrounds and stuff like that. This is really more of a show and tell, kind of explaining at least my my strategies as as how I approach this sort of stuff. So. Um, that is, you know, where we're going to go. So a while back, uh, I, um, it, was, it was right around the, the first of the year, uh, I was out at, at Fort Casey State Park here in Washington, which is on Whidbey Island. Um, and I'll drop a link in the chat. Um, Fort Casey is it's an old battery that was built during World War II, basically to protect... Um, the shipping and the naval yards here in Washington state. And it's all decommissioned now. It's just a state park, but the actual battery remains and like the bunkers and it's like behind a hill and you wouldn't even see it from the bluff, you know, if you're on a boat, unless you knew where to look, obviously. And, um, it is, it's, it's super cool first off, um, because most of it is still there and you can explore it. And it's always fun to go and just kind of wander around and take weird, photos of dark rooms and, and that sort of stuff. But while I was there, I took this, this photo and, um, this is the photo I'm going to base what I'm, what basically what I'm calling pond, which is going to be a future, uh, haunt. Um, it's not something, uh, like pond is kind of the working title. It may, I kind of like it just cause there's a lot that you can kind of take from it. And I have some ideas of how I want to add in the creepiness. Um, but we won't be doing that necessarily tonight. This is really just kind of getting the groundwork for a haunt and, and kind of what I'm, what I'm doing here. So this was the photo that I was working off of. When I saw this photo, um, I liked the fact that there was a lot of layers. I liked the fact that there was, um, some interesting place of signage. I like this little building that jutted forth. Basically that was a battery and like, um, they would haul ammunition up and there on the left hand side of the photo, there, a big gun would sit and they would kind of raise up if they needed to fire and it could lower back down, basically allowing them to, you know, do that, you know, fire and attack any enemy ships that never happened. But, um, if, if they needed to, that's what it was for. Uh, so this was kind of where I started and I'm always looking for stuff like this. I don't always use my own photos. There's tons of stuff out there that is free. Um, and people take photos of cities all the time. And so really though, what I'm looking for is this like concept of layers. So a little bit of a depth. So we got like these far back walls, we got the stairs, we got the building that kind of juts forward. We got that catwalk that goes across the top. There's those columns there in the front and one that partially blocks that door. There's a lot going on there. Um, and so like, that's where, like what I'm always looking for. And I actually have a, um, in my, in my old haunts folder, I actually have a location set in that I have an indoor and outdoor, um, Kind of, and these are just photos I've found that are free, or I've downloaded them from a um, um, some sort of like um, uh, I've licensed them essentially. So, and I keep them just handy because sometimes you just kind of strike when the muse, you know, you, like you strike while the iron's hot. And sometimes you know I'll stop, I'll just flip through these, and if something kind of comes to mind, you know, I would I can. Um, you know, start moving that down that way. But you'll kind of see that a lot of these have that same sort of depth. A lot of them are from Hong Kong, which is a big inspiration um, for me. Really, it's uh, Kulunwald City was kind of the inspiration for Lovat and its density. But a lot of that density we can found in smaller pockets within like, um, especially Southeast Asia cities, um, occasionally Western cities. But um, they're a lot more efficient with space in, in South Southeastern Asian like cities, but um, but you'll kind of see that there's definitely like I really like this one. You get these like interesting things going on on the right. You get these this this stuff going on on the top. Um, 
I have some outdoor ones because I've kind of been kicking around doing some of that. But you can definitely see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about layers and depth. A lot of these things you, people would just skip by because the photo itself may not be this gorgeous, well-framed photo. But there's some interesting stuff going on that I think um, can really be brought to the forefront. And so that's, that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. Um, these kind of, you know, often ignored spaces because... Lovat in particular, the streets of Lovat are, are very narrow. They're mostly walkable. There's a few that are probably wide enough for vehicles to get down, and like Walls talked about it. And, but vehicles are tough because you how do you move them between levels? You can, but like, you know, that costs a lot of money, and so usually it's just the wealthy people. So most people are getting around via public transportation or just walking. Um, and that's always kind of been the, the idea of Lovat is, is definitely that more walking city or, you know, either public transportation or something like bikes, things like that. So, um, yeah, that was, so, so you can see that I, I have a lot of these and this is just a small group of them. Um, but I, I saw, when I saw this photo of Fort Casey, I was like, oh, you know, that actually could be Lovat, but how do I turn this into Lovat, right? Like Lovat is, you know, hundreds of stories high. It has, you know, levels upon levels stacked on top of each other. And um, it ha you know, um, you don't usually see the sky, and everything feels a lot tighter. Well, the first thing to do is to kind of find the scene. And I, I work with the, they didn't always stay this way, but at least for right now, because that format was born from um, Instagram, they, I'm working on a 1080 by 1080 um, canvas, and I keep them square. Uh, because that's what Instagram wants. In the future, I might go 16 by 9 because I prefer that. But for right now, I've kind of focused on the square. So I've taken this photo and I open it up in uh, Photoshop. And really, what I start to do is extract the things that are not something that I'm going to carry over into the haunt. So what I've done here, and I'll make it a little larger just so everybody can kind of see it. Go, go a bit. So what I've done here is I've cut out the sky. I've gotten rid of the windows. I'm not going to go into details about how you do all this sort of stuff. Um, part of the reason I'm not going to go into details is because there's plenty of Photoshop tutorial stuff. I'm not really going to hit on Photoshop tutorials here. Um, go do those. There's people that are much better at tutorials than I am. I'm really talking about kind of the creative idea and how I start to see these things unfold and how I apply that um, to these animations. So... You can see what I've kept and what I've um, what I've kind of left um, in place. And in some cases, I got rid of things. So like the little battery A sign that was above the door is gone. Um, I like this sign and I could use that. It kind of felt like a like I could see it like in a neighborhood sort of thing. So I kept that. And um, but there's still some things that I that I wanted to change. I'm sure there's gravel streets in some parts of Lovat. It's cheap. You don't have to spend much time laying it down. It drains well. Uh, but that was like one of the first things I got rid of. So I added cement ground. And I actually went a step further just recently and, and decided to add a few other layers to make it wet. And really what I've done is just taken photos from my neighborhood of puddles when I was out walking my dog one day. Oh, I got a dirt thing there. Sorry. Um, and then I just adjusted it slightly and kind of placed it on top of that initial blank cement um, effect and I think it allows a little bit more effects like I don't imagine there like Lovat has so many little like roads and areas like all over the place that um I really liked uh you know the idea of kind of roughing it up a bit not it's not just this flat cement thing um even my neighborhood which is a pretty affluent neighborhood in Seattle um I have like the smallest house in like a, a neighborhood of huge houses kind of thing um even our roads around our neighborhood are pretty crummy. Like it just takes a lot for a city to maintain all these, all the little side roads. And that would absolutely happen in a place like Lovat. So, um, that is kind of the beginnings is really starting to get that structure. in. uh, the next thing I, I was trying to figure out is like what to do with this building. And I had no idea initially. Um, I like the idea of this building being separate from this. Like this is another part, uh, Lovat, uh, just like, um, uh, Kalunala Old City, um, Lovat, it, like every little tiny thing is used. Every little space is used. They try to cram as much as they can in there. doesn't mean that there's not forgotten spaces like this little section in here. Like that's absolutely something that would happen. It happened in the Walled City as well. But 
uh, in Lovat, uh, you know, you, it's not uncommon, and there's been scenes in books where, like, walls kind of describe, like, the randomness of buildings. So you could have, you know, a uh, directory agent next door is a, you know, um, a restaurant, and by that is a pawn shop, and by that is a, you know, tax person, you know, a tax, like, a, like an accountant's office, and then a lawyer, and then a strip club. Like, there's just no, like, you know, and then a manufacturer. Like, it, it's... There's a lot of that, of someone just using space to do something very simple. Um, the other thing that I think is really important as a city is making a city feel lived in. And a, in a, a, a city is dirty and it is um, kind of scuffed up a little bit along the edges. And so I'm applying that as well as I'm starting this stuff. So a lot of times I, I go through and start adding um, uh, graffiti. Like that's one of the first things I do, partially because I think it really shows a vibrancy to a city. Um, that you don't get if it's too clean. Um, I've always hated that about some sci-fi stuff is like uh, a lot of sci-fi really leans into this like cleanness aspect of things and none of and a lot of times those like stations don't really feel lived in. They don't feel comfortable. It feels kind of cold. Um, so like right there I just added the stickers and really those are just me ex like going and taking photos of stickers in the bathrooms of crummy bars and then extracting them out stringing them down and then slapping like slapping them up so really you're not actually getting the actual sticker so you're just getting kind of that texture and that um kind of haphazardness that you really that's that's more difficult to capture um than you would think a lot of times it's easier just to go find that stuff and then apply that stuff to to a uh, you know whatever you're working on um the other thing I started doing, like you'll see, like I added some grime up here. Uh, and then I'm starting to, I want to start to get some of that height. And by doing, by getting that height, it was like, well, I, I basically extracted another part of a different building. And I have a lot of these. That's the other thing I have a lot of is kind of um, very straightforward. Because like, if you noticed, all my uh, haunts are kind of from this like very straight angle. Like you're looking forward. Everything kind of faces you. It's not super haphazard most of the time. Um so it's harder than you think to, is to find really clean pictures of really unique looking buildings. So I started just collecting those. So I took a part of it, took it out, slapped it on top, did some adjustments, um, have some parts overlap and some don't. That way it starts to feel like it's a part of, you know, the building on a whole. Um, the other thing I started to do is thinking of signage too. Because um, a building is signage. And I hope my dog's probably barking in the background. Sorry about that. Um, and signage is an important part of a city. Like everywhere you go, there's signage describing something. Uh, so it's definitely something to um, to keep in mind as you're working on stuff like this. So I started adding these signage in here, and um, you know, it's like says, "Come on in above the door, buy, sell, trade." Because my my idea really started to come back to, well, this is a pawn shop, and the pawn shop part is important. Um, just because I think it adds a, yet another part of normal city life into this kind of strange setting. So that part is, you know, coming in as well. So like the address number here, that number is important. Um, and then, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but then I started adding stuff like on the doors. Uh, I wanted to, you know, I talked about, at, this was the neighborhood. So it says peaceable up there. Um, this is kind of the address, and in the address, you could also saw a bunch of graffiti come in there. Really, again, that's just me finding some graffiti. Uh, I tend to not, um, I tend to use tags more often than actual graffiti art because there's a bit of a difference there. Um, and I don't like doing my own graffiti because I'm not a graffiti artist. Um, and I tend to find graffiti fonts look too font like. Um, occasionally I will actually, and let me pull it up here. Occasionally it's, it's not uncommon for me to sketch some stuff out that will work. Um, and I take that and like, you'll see it like down here or things like that. So I don't do a lot of my own graffiti. I, I find it, it, I don't use graffiti fonts cause I find that it tends to not work very well. Um, and yeah, I just kind of start applying it and sometimes it's as simple as just adding like you know particular layer effects and then it just until it looks right and it's going to be different for every type based on because it's based on the color right so 
like that's um, something to, that I that I look at as well. And then it's just kind of you just start to add stuff across. Now all of my signs, especially text, is done in Illustrator, um, and the reason why I use Illustrator is because a I think you can lay out text a lot better in it. Uh, I think Photoshop is a bit crummy for that. So a lot of times I'll go lay out my text, pull it into Photoshop, and then I can apply texture and effects and things like that. I thought this was a fun way to kind of show the address. So this is level four. Um, you can see level four is highlighted here, just in case you can't read. Um, and then the sunk is actually indicated with these little waves, which I thought was fun. Um, so yeah, I, I actually do put that, that much detail into these things. And then it looks like this, and you can't even hardly tell. But you know what? I can tell, and it makes me happy, and that's important. And I can use it potentially somewhere else. So still, Peaceable is the neighborhood or the Warren that this is actually set in, um, and this is a level four in Peaceable. So um, yeah, and I, I like the idea of kind of as you're starting to move up it, it will kind of tell you where you're at. Um, so that is one aspect. Um, the other thing I do is i mean you see me add stuff in i added these pipes and then i have these cables here cables are a big part of this because electric there's no i mean there's an electric there's like an electric company that brings electricity to the city from a giant geothermal power plant that's ancient but i think um you know if you look at some of those kind of haphazard cities or those haphazard neighborhoods electricity is just borrowed from anybody by anybody so cables are an important part of that and i add cable into it pipes as well because water and you know sewer and that sort of stuff um and then i start thinking a little bit larger uh and so uh, you know the pond sign um and this is a blend of eastern and western uh pond um, if you've ever seen Eastern Pawn Signs, they're like kind of this funky bat above a gold coin. Let me see if I can, uh, I think if we just go to Google, we type Chinese Pawn Sign. Yeah. So, bat above a coin. Pretty straightforward. That's like the common sign there. Um, the Western sign, and I don't know how Western it is, tends to be these kind of three balls things. The pawn brokers, so that three, the three spheres, thanks to the Medici. Um, so same sort of thing going on here. Three spheres, bat, kind of a combination of those two systems. Um, and then, so, you know, added a little pawn sign. That's multiple layers working to kind of achieve that effect. Um, there's lots of ways to do it. Uh, but yeah, that was something I started doing. Um, and then, uh, you know, that's kind of the foreground. We're starting to see, it's starting to come together and feel a little bit different than that initial image that we saw. Um, the other thing that I start around this time, and we'll come back to some of these other things here, because I think they're important. But this, I don't work on these in the like in this. I kind of work all over the place. So like I'll work on the top portion, and then I'll come down into like you know the lower corner and work down there. Um, but the background is a thing that I, I usually will start about now. The background is usually a lot of different things. Um, and I try, like, a lot of it's just trial and error. And so it took me a while to find something that I thought worked really well. Um, and I ended up going with, uh, I'm going to hide, I'm gonna hide the middle ground. So that's all this is. This is a, just another stock photo that I licensed. Um, and I just position it in a way that I think, is interesting I did not like what was going on here so that's why you saw me come in here and add a girder and then you add shadow and all that it starts to tie it together um, it'll further be tied together when it actually goes into an animation sequence of like the animation sort of sequences because what happens then is I start adding like texture like film grid and things like that which just kind of merges a lot of these um, kind of divergent sections into one um and, and that's always been something that's really key for these as well so background starts to get done and then it's like oh okay well i don't like this window originally i was going to try to find like have a person sit there just kind of like leaning out the window smoking but i couldn't find stock footage that worked very well and that was i didn't want to go shoot my own stock footage for that so 
in the end, I started, I was thinking about what to do. I believe it used to be um, a door that they would kind of lift up uh, ammunition for those big guns. But uh, I like the idea of it kind of being like maybe a manufactory. So I, I you know, I came back um, into here and I, I added in this kind of mossy like grate. And, I'll, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. So starting to do that sort of stuff. And then the other thing that I started to do is trying to figure out what to do in here. And in there, I decided to go, you know, I started to think around this pawn shop and then I was just trying to find some super old photos of pawn shops and dropping those in there. And so that's essentially what I did. Um, so I really end up with two, like right now I'm really dealing with two different layers. Um, I have what I'm calling my middle ground and then I'm having what I call my background. Um, and when I start to composite these in um, a different program, uh, you'll you'll kind of see how this all works out. But like I would essentially export these as those two different um, as those two different different layers. Uh, but we're not done. Like we need to um, we need to add, we need to start adding the foreground. I really wanted a, a like some sort of sign here that was interesting, um, and maybe something here. I don't like the idea of grass in a lot of Lovat unless it is exposed to the sun. So uh, I tend to uh, try to, um, I wanted to hide that because it was very clearly grass. So essentially what I did is I, I brought in, and we'll hide the newspaper here for a second. Um, this was something that I was able to license. It's just a bunch of graphics that are, are all you know, neon signs, I shrunk them down so it kind of fit. Um, I actually have a version with the W out and then a version with the uh, W on, um, which will allow me to do some funny animation stuff. So like that's a part of it. Uh, brought a trash can in. This isn't fully integrated yet. Uh, brought a trash bag in with a bone. Um, so like it's not fully integrated at this point, but uh, you know, it's there right now. Um, so it's starting to come together as far as a scene goes. And from there, it was kind of time to go back to that kind of middle ground section. So I now have three sections before we go back to the middle ground. I have this foreground area. Um, I have the, my two background areas, and then I have this middle ground. So this is kind of what the foreground looks like. You can see I also cut out the catwalk just in case I wanted to have somebody like walk in front of the catwalk. Um, and I am uncertain if I will do that, but it's always nice to kind of leave myself, leave that sort of thing open. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at in constructing these sort of scenes. Um, in, in the middle ground, I started to uh, explore some way to add some uh, more depth to it, make it feel a little bit more um, uh, grimy, I guess, for lack of a better word. Uh, so I added this, um, and you probably saw that pretty quickly. Uh, some light beams coming out of the pawn shop. Well, that's dark, so anytime you have light, like it's kind of nice to always indicate some of that. I thought the reflection on the ground here in particular was a, was a nice touch. Um, it makes it, again, starts to tie in some of those background and foreground layers in like a really interesting way. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm not really a wizard, but, you know, I... I try. I, most of this I just kind of mess around with until it looks right. Um, <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, start to add characters to it. And this is a little dangerous in some cases because um, I've overdone it in a few places. Uh, I tend to think it works better if it, the animation's a little bit more subtle. And I think it works a little bit better, at least for these sort of scenes, if you don't have a ton of um, animation happening all at once. If we go back to uh, the Red Light Night, and again, I'm going to photosensitive warning just in case it starts doing its flashy thing. I don't want, any, don't want anybody, you know, having a seizure or anything like that. Um, initially... Initially, like you can see, I have some people walking up here, but it's like more subtle. Uh, I had like a guy walk across the screen at one point. Um, I had people standing on the corners. I had, um, I had.
had, uh, you know, there was like a bunch of people waiting in line at a food truck. And it, because of the nature of stock footage, it doesn't, it doesn't, it didn't feel real. It felt staged. And so a lot of what I'm doing is trying to remove that. So like I ended up just going to the lone guy sweeping, which you can kind of see right there. Um, there's like one person that walks across the background. There's some laundry above him that flaps in the breeze. But like, you know, there's not like a, you know, exotic dancer standing on the corner trying to, you know, lure people into, you know, Dexter's ward. Um, like that's not like I, I ended up pulling a lot of that stuff because it just felt over the top and all the all the uh, stock that I was trying to use for it just felt really stiff and I didn't want to go try to shoot all that sort of stuff. Like it just would take a ton of, take a ton of time. So I didn't want to do that. Um, so I really wanted something that's a little bit more natural. And uh, I found a, a stock photo of a smoker staring at his phone kind of leaning against a column and I thought it added a lot to the scene again adds some more of that depth so I started to bring him into there as well um but there's no such thing as cell phones in Lovat so the first thing I did was go find uh, a guy holding a newspaper and then did some adjustments um so now he's reading a newspaper which I think looks a lot better um and then uh you I was able to, you know, I also I also boosted, like if you can tell, maybe you can't tell on the stream, it's always hard to tell, um, boosted the tip of his cigarette so it's glowing because it's kind of down in that shadow. Uh, and it's close, he's not 100% there, but I'm really liking where that's starting to look. Um, and then I actually went, and I'm not going to get into everything, I did uh, a few little animations with his head. Um, because I wanted him to move, but not a ton. Because a lot of times when people are engrossed in something, they're not sitting there just like moving. And that's part of the problem with stock imagery and or trying to like take uh, transparent stock and throwing it into a scene is that it will um, very quickly feel like a bunch of people acting out these really weird roles. Because like you know they'll call somebody in and they're like, "You're a pirate," and then they're like, "Yar," and then they do just like kind of piratey things. That doesn't like work if you're trying to create a scene that's based off of realism. So that's a, a big part of, of kind of why I wanted to keep kind of the animation subtle. I might do something with the newspaper. I haven't, I haven't decided, but that's at least kind of the, the working theory around that. Um, and then I always have like layers of shadows and oh, there, of course they're turned off and they, I have different levels and usually they come from a corner. Um, again, it's just me tying some of that stuff into the scene. Um, and the other thing I thought about doing, and it's something that I, I definitely address on some level, is kind of just the homeless aspect of Lovat. Like, that's not an uncommon thing. Um, so I wanted to bring something in there. And uh, a lot of the, the homeless stock is pretty insensitive. So um, really, it was this was me trying to find something that would work and feel real and also... Um, uh, again, feel like that living, vibrant part of a city, um, including sometimes the ugly parts of it. So uh, I ended up putting a homeless guy sleeping back here on his bag. He has horns. You can't tell. He's Dominion. Um, it's it's super subtle. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm still debating on how far I want to go with it, but I thought he added another scene to it. I liked that the guy wasn't bothered by him and was... You know, just kind of there were just two people living their lives in a similar corner of a city. I think that's an important thing to to show. Uh, all the stuff I'm showing tonight is going to be on um, Adobe products. I'm not an a, Adobe um, apologist at all. Uh, I, you know, I've been using their products for two decades, probably a little bit longer. Um, but uh, because Carlisa and I are running businesses at a house, we have a Adobe subscription to Creative Cloud. It's not cheap. It's like 50 bucks a month. But um, because I have access to all these tools, I might as well use them. So uh, I'm going to be switching over to Premiere here shortly. But I you know, I use Illustrator. I use Photoshop. Uh, any of the sound stuff I do, uh, which I won't get into sound editing tonight, um, I'm using uh, Adobe Audition as well. Um, and then obviously I lay books out in InDesign. So it's like I use a lot of the Adobe suite Um and so that's, and it all kind of works pretty well together, uh, even though it crashes occasionally, <laughs> occasionally. Um, 
but uh, that is um, that that's kind of at least how I start to structure these scenes so really now um, the way I have it set up is I have a shadow layer um, I have the foreground layer which is dumpsters newspapers the pond sign and then uh, you know the catwalk I have the middle ground layer and then I have the background layers um, which get exported those all get exported as transparent PNGs and from there we go into Adobe Premiere Pro uh, so I'm new to this product I haven't done a ton with it I'm just hacking stuff out a lot of people think that, a lot of people ask me initially are you working on um, After Effects and the answer is no I'm not a lot of this is just compositing um, I'm figuring it out as I go along uh, and yeah so Premiere is kind of clunky it's kind of weird to use I've figured a lot of stuff out since then um, this all lives in a directories that are organized by audio PNG different videos that sort of stuff um, you can see how I have it laid out here it's exactly what I was kind of showing you guys I have you know the shadow PNG this is a 30 second long clip that's what that is indicating there um, I got the foreground with a, what I'm calling the outage W and this is how I was I was telling you that I can make like the neon flash and that's what I'm doing is I'm basically showing and hiding a PNG that's it it's really straightforward and kind of stupid There's, there might be easier ways to do it but it works really well for me and takes seconds um, the foreground is obviously there uh, this is some of the effects that start tying into this the scene itself um, here's the, the, the smoker character um, and then I basically am dropping in a little movie which I set up with some of these the frame animations to like rotate his head or have him draw a little closer to the paper uh, the, so middle ground headless um, to do this this head rotate and I'm gonna pop back to Photoshop real quick I actually have a version of the smoker it's kind of funny um, where he doesn't have a head and that allows me to kind of do some animation with it and you just figure that out it's like oh it looks better than having yeah you, you don't want like you know the ghost of a head to remain behind as he's like moving around so that's what's going on there um, and then you'll notice like there's like an open sign down here that's just some stock footage of an open sign um, I did some some funky stuff so it actually looked like it was part of the scene it's really easy to do, just take um, these sort of things and then apply a blend mode to them and that's all I'm doing is I'm applying a blend mode to some stock footage drop out the blacks drop out the whites whatever I need to do to make it kind of feel like it's part of the scene um so there's that uh so like it actually is three parts the open sign that you'll see here in a few seconds when I actually let this animate um and some of that is like well those things are usually on like some sort of plastic that's partially transparent and there's also just the, the open sign itself that is you know off so as things animate you're going to show some of those off sections and then um we have you know things like the, you'll notice there's smoke in the background here it's called smoke just because that's the stock footage i think of it more as steam uh it's on low vet sits on the water so it's a steamy city and um if you've ever visited seattle it's also a steamy city like lots of steam we have like a steam plant that provides you know heat and stuff to people and like steam's coming up out of the sidewalk all the time and, yeah so steamy cities love them that's a big reason why you're seeing that here um and then uh, i have a little silhouette of a guy in the background I do this on every single one of these like if you zoom in on all these you will find all sorts of random stuff that you totally would not see on your phone on Instagram um, I'm okay with that like if somebody takes the time and like looks through it all like more power to them and then the background and these are just like what I was showing you in Photoshop they're just essentially PNGs um, of you know those different spaces and you, you you turn them on and off you know that's what that's what happens and then yeah, once you enter it in together, everything starts playing in. Uh, in the past, um, you saw like the W flashing. We just turned stuff on and off. The open sign's doing its thing down here. If you really stare, you might see this guy's head move. Um, in the past, I have, um, I've. Uh, Done multi I basically composited multiple videos in partially because 
you have too much stuff running all at once, especially on a system like mine, it really bogs it down. So I find it easier to take like sections. So like little parts that I might just remove, turn it into its own video and then composite it into like one. I did that with, um, I'll pause this here. I did that with uh, the Red Light Nights one. This is actually three different videos. Uh, there's the foreground, which is like Delapore's over here, the trash on the street, like this whole thing going on. There's the background, which is Dexter's Ward and like the guy sweeping and all that. And then there was like actually a third one, which is this kind of upper portion of the city that you can kind of see through um, where that figure at the top is standing. So each of those were actually their own movie that got built out and then rendered. And then I brought them all together in kind of the final version. So that's, that's not uncommon for me to do, especially if I'm starting to get a lot. I always do sound together though. So um, regardless of how complex this is, um, when I get into the actual sound editing portion of it, and you can see I have lots of empty channels still, um, it really is just music. Uh, it, it's, it's, you'll see all the sound there. And some of that is just for timing, so I can see what else is happening at the same time. So, you know, a, you know, if steam, if a steam sound appears or there's like a buzzing neon sound or something like that, it's always good to kind of have that timing down, even if it's, um, it was rendered in a different, uh, movie and it lets me know what to turn on and what to turn off um because you don't want to overwhelm it like there's usually there's many layers of sound to these sort of things maybe one day i can do a stream on just layering soundscapes for these sort of things but yeah that's um that is kind of how this all starts and how things get rendered i'm not going to go into details of what will happen with the rest of this um this uh old haunt um, i'm sure i'll do something creepy it's called Pawn, and we'll see where I take it. But yeah, that's kind of this in a nutshell. It looks like I took about 45 minutes, so about what I expected. Um, and yeah, does anybody have any questions uh, on the chat? Happy to answer questions. Well, while we're waiting for that, uh... <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Uh, I might do some further stuff where I might move a few pixels on one side and add a few pixels on the other, which kind of will give you like the rotation. Um, I let me show you real quick just so you can see. Uh, let's see if we can't zoom in. Yeah, so here I'll show you. You can see it rotate a little bit. And I thought it was looking pretty good. And it kind of changes. Uh, I change a little bit of the lighting on his face there. And then he, here he kind of looks closer at the thing. It just lower it a little bit. Um, I might do this to uh, blend it a little bit more, but I was pretty happy with how just that, those few, like it's super subtle, but I, it was just, it was subtle enough that I think it turned out pretty good. Um, but that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, there are two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four. There's four, four other artists that I think uh, I'm going to call out in particular. Um, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, there's yeah. So there's four other artists that I want to call out in particular um, that have really kind of uh, kicked off some of this stuff. Um, the first first one is uh, Chris Chris Straub's uh, Local Fifty Eight, um, which uh, I'm not actually gonna let it autoplay. If you haven't seen this, go watch it. It's amazing. Um, I'll drop links for all this stuff in the channel. Um, so local 58 is this kind of creepy community television station. Uh, Chris is actually a, a comic book artist, does some cool stuff. Uh, he's from Seattle. I've met him a couple times. Uh, but this is my favorite thing he does is the local 58 stuff. Highly recommend watching it. Definitely kind of has that subtle, uh, creepy vibe. Does some really good audio stuff and a lot of glitch work. So if you like glitch stuff, that's one I'd recommend. 
Uh, Trevor Henderson's another one whose artwork is all over the place. Um, he, in particular, he does these things where he'll mod, he'll basically take old photos, and he will um, he'll kind of mod them. You can kind of see this this one from Twitter where he'll add these like just little creep little bits of creep to it, which are kind of fun. Um, and obviously, those were something that kind of stuck in my head because I do similar things where like I have you know gargoyles from the books kind of pop in or pop out or that sort of thing uh the other other person that I, I've been looking at is Eduardo and I'm going to butcher this name Eduardo uh Valdez Heavy Hevia Hevia maybe um and he is uh you know he goes and finds um you know library of congress like open open source usually old photos and does some and does some pretty cool uh you know visual uh tweaks to it to make them a little creepy or a little surreal uh i recommend his stuff oh let me drop links real quick uh trevor henderson um and then eduardo's work and then Last but not least is somebody whose work has been all over the internet for years, and that's Kevin J. Weir, who also has taken a lot of old photos and done a lot of animation. He hand animates a lot of these things. Uh, you've probably seen his Flux Machine, which were these, like, um, you know, just photos from the Library of Congress Flickr account, and then he just did full-on animation to them. Um, and, again, the thing, the thing, like, I always loved how they looped and how weird they were. And there's definitely those that sort that sort of thing kind of in play um, with uh, what I'm doing with my stuff as well. So, uh, oh, Slater. Um, so yeah, Kevin J. Where's the other other one that I uh, that I would recommend checking out? Hello, Slater. Um, so yeah, that is uh, what. That's how I do the old haunt stuff. Um, I. It was one of those things, here I'll go back to chatting. It was one of those things that I uh, thought people would get a kick out of kind of seeing what goes into it. And it's always um, a little more uh, clear when you can, when you can, you know, when it, people are like, what do you use? And I tell them Premiere, and they're like, how do you do that? And I'm like, well, like this. And so I think that's, that's one of the reasons why I uh, really wanted to kind of show, you know, the, the level of, of layers and sort of things that I'm looking for when I put these together. So yeah, that is uh, old haunts or how I do old haunts. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, kind of did this one on a, a random. I'm hoping to kind of keep doing these if people keep showing up on, uh, on Tuesday nights. Um, yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, I think it's a kind of fun way just to hang out and chat. Um, and, you know, yeah, people can come and go as they please. This will be recorded. I'll post this up on my uh, YouTube page as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up. Uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, kind of, you know, everybody's excitement. Um, I will be back here next, uh, next Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to go wrestle myself up for dinner. Hope everybody's enjoying Gleam Upon the Waves. Um, thanks again. <laughs>